I got to sand all this after the fact. So just pare a little bit off with the chisel. Tell me, it felt like it was rocking on this corner. was there's a hair there so it is a little bit from this corner to that corner it's just a little bit so what I'm going to do I'm just grazing over this joint to make sure there's no unlevelness there. I think that'll get it. It's in there. That's it. Alright. In order for us to sand the raised panel door, we've got an issue. And the issue is there's no support out here. So when it goes through the sander, the other problem is, is there's nothing says that this ray is supposed to be, but there's nothing says this raised panel is perfectly in the same plane as our back. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to graze the raised panel. We've got a nice thick one. So we're just going to graze it. Now remember, we want to keep our raised panel above the door. That's a nice raised panel. Now if you're doing kitchen cabinets and all like that, having a big drum sander, sanding that puppy flat so you can do both sides, you're not going to hear me complain. We're not building a set of kitchen cabinets. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it through on the back, like I said, touch the top of this. That puts that gives us a mirror image top and bottom. So then when I flip it over, sand the back a little bit, I'm going to get the same thing. What I'm going to have to do when I put it through is as this is going through that sander, I've got to be sure when I start in, I'm, number one, I'm sanding light. Second thing I want to do when I put it in, in those sanders is a roller. It's a pressure roller. If we're not careful, Especially on a smaller door, we can get this. It can tip on us. So make sure when it goes in, we're flat on the conveyor and we hold down tight here. Let it go in. Once it comes out the other side, we want to take our hand and hold down firmly here so that it doesn't do the same thing on the back. Let's go watch. Got a little cut.
All right, guys, you know, I put it through, reversed it, and put it right back through on the exact same setting. Now, the reason you want to do that, I did the same thing on the other, is while this is supposed to be perfectly parallel, sometimes it can just be a thousandth or two off. By doing that, you ensure both sides. We've got a little bit right here, nothing a random orbit won't clean up as well as here. We're good. Okay, guys, the doors are sanded flat. Like I said, this little bit that's in the center here, that'll clean up with the, when we do our final sand. One of the things I like to do, this is just about a strong sixteenth. It's just a little strip of wood that I cut off the left side of the blade. Make sure it's equal. And all I do is set it in place to maintain my gap. Like I said, it's just a strong, good strong sixteenth. Now, I'm going to locate my hinges. Now the hinges I'm going to be using, of course we got the bright brass, these are the, the ball top, they're from Horton Brass. Now I can't emphasize to you the importance of buying a good hinge. You can buy those little cheap thin ones, but then it, particularly if you got doors and you got glass, on this bottom we're going to be using two hinges, one here, one here. Top door, I'm going to have three. I don't have to have three on the top, but it sure looks nice, and it keeps, then I know, it, it makes my door look supported. I like it. So, and the reason I say you don't have to have three is that, well, you can see the thickness of the leaves on these hinges. And the other thing is, I've used these forever. I'm not doing a commercial for Horton Brasses. These things just never fail me. Never. Now, the way I'm going to do mine, I'm going to my top. In this case, this is the top. My top rail. I got it right. That's a rail. That's a style. Don't ask me tomorrow. All right, and all I'm going to do is, is draw me a line. I've done the same thing here. All right, Charles, how do you get all them gaps exactly the same? You sneak up on them. A little plain, a little rasp, a little sand. You saw what we did on the table saw. Just take your time and go easy. Again, I'm going I'm to go exactly what I did in line with my rail. Hmm. Cheat a little bit here. Now, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Then, using my hinge on my line, I'm going to go below it. On the top, I'm going to go above it. On the bottom, same thing on the uppercase. Then for my center, I'm going to go right between the two doors, the center of the door. Or the, the center of the, of the glass opening. 
Okay, that's what I'm doing. Could you just simply go the same distance from the top here, here, and then divide and go in the center? Yeah, it looks great. It does fine. Not an issue whatsoever. So I'm going to find me a center line. Then with my hinge, I'm going to take the center hole and just center it up right on my center line, and that'll put it straight in the, in the middle of it. All right. And we're going to be using a router. We're going to be using a router to cut the mortise for the hinge. But, the rotation of that bit in here can cause us an issue and chip chip on our corner. So here's what we're going to do. I didn't draw this down in here. Take your nice saw and nip your corner down enough that it's going to prevent a chip out. I'm going down about 3.30 seconds, not quite a quarter. Then cut it on your line. Now if you want to know how deep to make it and you really want to mark it, close your hinge. When you close this hinge, it's not this distance you're going to be concerned with. It's going to be the distance of when this hinge is in place, it's going to be this distance. The thing, same thing is going to happen when we set up our router. Now I'm going to use a little trim router. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. When I set this up, I'm going to go slightly, whatever my gap I want is how much I'm going to leave showing on the leaf. See this distance right here? That would be my gap. Now I'm going to give you a hint too. Take yourself a piece of scrap wood, two pieces. Put a hin hinge it. Set this up, make a cut, hinge it, and make sure you're right. Don't take any chances. I'll get it right. I was going the wrong down. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to set up a test, run a test, hinge it, and see what I got. Come back, we'll cut our, cut our mortises. All right, guys, I did my test setup. And I'm a little wider than what I wanted, so I simply adjusted my router. Again, make sure you got your router set right. Now, I want to, like I said, I'm using a trim router. You can use a regular router if, it's, if you can get in here. Now, one of the problems, this is a three inch hinge, is when I'm routing this, I can reach a point that I can drop. See that? I can drop off, and that would cause me to mess up. Go point to point. Use your corners. 
by using your corners and also start from the outside up here. In other words, if you start on this end and come down, see you're leaving the meat here so that you give your router support. Then as you come down, doing it on the, on the cross corner, you can pick it up and you just do get that support you need. Be careful with that. Simply route out your mortise where you're happy. Now I forget what size this is. What is this thing? Five sixty-fourths. I gotta look. I don't ever remember. Yep, five sixty-fourths. This is one of those little snappy bits or a Vix bit. It's a self-centering deal. They are almost a must. Now this is the 564, the small one. So I think this uses a number four screw. Fold it over and make sure it's 90 degrees to it. Now because of this angle, it's hard to do. Now I want to mention something. Let me back up here a minute before, before we go too far. When I route this, because it's on an angle, because I'm setting on this angle, when I'm taking that router and running it, your inclination is going to be to pull it straight up. Make sure you stay flat down to get, you, get your mortise right. When you're done, to make sure, take a square and double check it to your face frame. Now that's important because if you have this tilted any, when you take that hinge and if, you, if it's on this case and that case is tilted a little bit, it's going to kick the hinge one way or the other. Throw your door out of alignment very quick. Here's another tip. On your door side, this edge, put it on your table saw and run about a one degree angle on the side. What am I talking about? If we take this door and right here we make a little one degree angle this way. That puts a little bit of a back edge on this or a little bit more space in the back than it does at the front. That'll keep our hinges. Now these don't. I, you don't have an issue. That'll keep our hinges when we got the screws in here of ever being able to bind up. It just makes them work a little smoother. Even a half degree. Just a little bit. Alright. Back to putting this in. Now this is the nice thing about a good set of hinges. Fold this over right where you want it. Drill it. Now here's a key. Here's a trick rather. Drill it with your 564. Then bump it with a 764. Why? If you take a look at that brass screw, there's a little heavy area right here at the head of it. Just helps it go in easier, set better. Now one of the other things is usually these the VIX, some of them call these VIX bits, snappy bits. Typically they don't drill deep enough for a three-quarter screw and that's what these are. That same little bit that you use to drill for them toothpicks make your hole a little deeper. You're using a brass screw and believe me not all of them are made the same. These are about as good as it's going to get but they're still brass. Use a good lubricant. You can use a candle wax. Um, you know, they got that, what is it, beeswax, that Akampucky or whatever it is they got out there. This is some slideies from, from Mohawk. You want me to tell you what really makes a good screw lubricant? Go to the hardware store and get you a toilet ring. You know the wax rings that, that goes around the bottom of a commode when you put it down? Get you one of them, it'll last you a lifetime. A little bit in there, lubricate that brass screw. Now, 
the other thing you want to do if you're smart is get you a steel screw from the hardware store and use it first Now I'm going to tell you something else I do. I know I'm nuts. I buy the Phillips screws. When I order my hardware, I get the Phillips. And I've already got some, but anyway. And I put it all together using the Phillips. Now you know old timey and antique furniture didn't have Phillips screws. Now I know it didn't have square drives either, but we're going to hide them. But on this hardware, I put it all together initially using a Phillips. Then when I put it together the final time, I use a straight screw. Yeah, no. All right, that one's in. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to cut and put this one in. What happens if you cut your mortise too deep? Real simple. Little teeny thin shim, glue it in. So I hear I... Trust me, it's, it's been done. All right, one more time. Watch me route this. See right here what I did, where I had that inclination to, to tilt the router? We got to get that. Now I probably can't get all the way over to that edge without dipping down in there and I don't want to do that. And that's why I'm telling you, double check this thing, make sure it's square. If you need to clean it up with a little chisel. All right, I'm going to install this one. We're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to line it up on the door and that's hinges. All right, I got both my hinges in. Now I've only got one screw. Why is that? Well, in case I get off or mess up, then I can come back and fix it in place. Make sure your gaps are good where you want. Mark your hinge. Again, back to that, why do I, use, why do I only use one screw in it? If, when I'm putting this together, if I've got a little bit of deviation or something, I can twist or move a hinge a little bit and that will help me get it lined up. Here's another reason guys not to buy a cheap hinge. This is, this is one of the other hinges. But they're machined well enough. I've got this marked. Again, what I'm doing, let me get this where you can see it good. What I'm doing is, that my, it's hard to see my lines, but all I'm doing is putting it right between my pencil lines, folding it to 90 degrees. Again, back with my drill bit. It's 
Same thing up here. Just a little bump with that 764. And give it a little bit more depth. And we're gonna hang a door. Get a little lubricant on it. Now I'm going to tell you something else too. I know a lot of guys try to use these uh, power screwdrivers and all. I don't use, I don't even tempt it on the brass screws. Because these are solid brass. These are not brass plated. The real deal. Okay guys, close the door, make sure we're good, we're good, actually I could probably kick up just a little bit, now by only having one screw in there I can do that and not have a major issue, Fill, fix the hole the, the one hole we've already drilled. Remember that toothpick? You got it. Catch you next week.